let's get ready to take down our own Goliath. I, of course, mean the Titanic Eidolons on Earth. Before we get into this, let's go through some setup, some things that I expect before starting this. This is as close to four beginners as I can make it, but I do highly recommend that you have finished the Angels of the Zaraman questline. This is going to give you the Drifter and the Sirocco, as well as access to some Arcanes. Now, I will not be using Arcanes right now. I don't feel like this is enough episodes past that for me to reasonably be doing it. So, we're going to imagine I don't have any Arcanes. We're going to be using the Plain Sirocco, but I am going to be using the Madurai Focus School. So, you should have spent at least a few days getting these four abilities right here. You want to get these maxed out as much as you can. These three are the most important, and that's because this is going to just naturally increase your damage. This is going to add a multiplier to that damage. You can see there that if we use 100% of our energy using this ability. You'll see later on. This is going to drastically improve the amount of damage we do with the operator, and this is going to add crit damage, which is going to give us some good spikes of damage, which is exactly what we need to be having. Those are the three things that are going to make the biggest difference to the amount of damage that you can do to an Eidolon. And just so that you can see in my equipment, we're going to be taking off all of this, and we're going to just use the base Sirocco. Something else that can be time-consuming then, if you don't have it already, we are going to be using Trinity. Prime or not Prime is not going to make a world of difference. The main thing that we are looking to use here is going to be Trinity's Blessing. This is because this allows us to apply damage resistance to other things around us, and that's going to be important when we get further into the video. Moving on to gear. The most important things for me are on the horizontal and vertical axes. You are obviously going to want the arc wing to be able to move around fast. We are going to be using the Necromech to our advantage. This is actually very key. We're going to go a little bit more into the setup of this in a second. Energy restore pads, because then if your energy gets drained, which is going to happen a lot, you can pop one of these and then Trinity can use her heal. And lock pins. I cannot stress enough how useful these are. If you don't know where you get them from, fast travel to the Tenno Lab in your clan, and you'll find them around halfway down just here. Make sure you have this blueprint and start building them. Then should be well enough for the purposes of this video, but you can definitely put as many as you'd like out once you see what it is we're going to be doing with them. On to the Necromech then. Now, it is not really the Necromech mods that are going to be making the big difference here. You could go ahead and farm up Necromech Streamline, and if you other decent mods, if you guys want to do that, that's fine. But realistically, it's mostly basic. The main thing that you need to pay attention to is the Archibex. In here, you want to mount up as much damage as you can, and we are concentrating on crit damage and radiation element. This is because the Eidolons treat crit damage differently to other damage types and have less resistance to it. I'm sure somebody has all of the mechanics of it. I just know that this is what happens. And radiation is the element that they are vulnerable to. So therefore, those are the two things you need to be concentrating on. So when you look at over at my mods, then we're looking at Paradox Scope for the crit chance. We're looking at Combustion Rounds and Electric Barrel to get radiation. And we are looking at crit damage to capitalize on that. Everything else after that is basically changeable, but Auto Trigger is obviously going to be more damage. Sabbat Rounds and we have Primed Rubido Lined Barrel. There are probably other cool things we could put here instead of Magma Chamber, but this is just all I had on my character at the time. Having this loadout on your Necromech is going to basically mean that we can immediately pop the joints of the Eidolons as soon as we get into the Void Rig, which is going to make everything much, much easier. Coming on to your primary, the same thing applies. So I'm obviously using the Robico because I have it, but there's nothing realistically stopping using the Soma. It won't be great, but it is a crit weapon, and so therefore will do good damage. And basically any sniper rifle ends up being pretty good. So the Vectis is good. I've seen people do good stuff with the Lanka if you don't want to use a prime weapon, but I don't really like charge up very much, so I tend not to use it. And try to avoid explosive weapons. Yes, we're going to be using one with the Necromech, but we're going to get that many shots with it. It's not going to matter too much. The radial damage does not apply to the Eidolon. We do need to deal with the damage correctly, but you can see there's not really much of an issue with the Necromech. It's not going to be a problem. So this is here. This is a side arm, just in case I absolutely need it, but we're probably not going to be using it in the video. Technically, we need it to be nighttime for us to start dealing with the Eidolon but whilst it's day, I just want to show you what we're going to do with the lock pins. When we have lock pins and we're out on the planes, we can actually set them down like this. And this is going to create a map marker for us. I'm, gonna, I'm also just going to destroy this one because I'm not actually going to use it. But if I bring up my main map here, you can see that I've already placed a few out because I wanted to have some that I was going to show you guys. When we first come out, and you can feel free to place these along with me if you don't already have any lock pins of your own. This is your very first time. So we're going to get up here and we're going to start flying. We're going to move straight to the left. This is basically the path that 
I'm going to go during the night time, right? We're going to place a lock pin right over here. This is where a lure will usually be. We'll talk about those once we get them to spawn later on. So they're usually either there in the middle or over here. And so I have my lock pin right there. If we basically carry on just to the right very slightly, another one appears at this camp right here. And you can see I've got the map pin right there. And I didn't have lock pins on me at the time. But there's actually another camp right here that can also spawn another one. And so I'm going to clear this out so we can place one in front of you guys. This is obviously going to be called lure. We're going to like using this little wispy symbol and mine are green. You guys pick whatever you want. I'm not here to hold your hand quite that much. And the reason I picked those three that are all nice and fast is because that means whenever you enter out here, you go into the idle and someone starts telling you, get some, get some lures, get some lures. You've now got three points. They respawn over the course of the night once everybody like leaves the area of where they are spawning. So therefore you can go back to those whenever you need to and you will now have lures available. A few hours after a quick break and you can see on the main panel of navigation there, it says Plains of Idolon day in 41 minutes. That means it is nighttime now. So we are going to go on down to Cetus. And I know the game calls it Cetus, but I like saying Cetus. After a quick check of our gear, we obviously need to go to Honzu so that we can select our Eidolon bounty. We are going to go for the Terrorist. I do not recommend going for a triple in the state that we are in right now. This is in the future once we have unlocked the ability to create better amps. But before we do that, I do need to do an amp guide. So that's going to be a little bit later in the playlist. All right, then, as explained earlier, once we are out on the plains, we're going to take a quick left. Now, keep your ears out. You'll, generally speaking, be able to hear where the terror list is going to be. But that's one lure. As you can see, we shoot it once with the Rubico or whatever weapon it is you have. Get in there and hack it. Second one. I know it's a bit quick, but it's because there's a lot of enemies around and I don't want them to get too damaged. Of course, we can heal them, but we'd rather not have to if we don't have to. And then a little bit over this way for a third. Mega quick, right? Now, when you have all three of your lures, we need to get them charged. As well as that, we also need to make them safe. So a good thing that we can do is when we're up in the air, because they don't really move very much, but as soon as we get back down to the ground, they'll come to us. So we can quickly just come back from collecting them, take them back to the entrance there. And now they'll stay pretty close to where they are. I don't know why that one's moving off. <laughs> Sometimes you get a glitch at the worst of times. And now we can go ahead and find the terror list. So we're going to just have a bit of a ride around until we can hear some noise. As we are riding around, we want to keep a lookout for the Vomvalists, which are little floaty things. We will have to see some eventually, as they are what we need to charge the lures. We can actually do them directly from the Terror List, so if that becomes a thing we need to do, that's a thing that we'll do. Here we have a Vomvalist. Let's go over how we charge the lures. You see when this is connected to the Vomvalist, if we shoot it, that is going to count as a part of the charge for the Eidolon. Each lure needs three of these to be fully charged, so we are going to have to do quite a few. But now that you've seen them out in the wild, what I'm going to show you guys how to do next is how to get them to appear near the terror list. So when it comes to finding the terror list, you can see it's not exactly the most obvious of colors, particularly far away. What you're kind of doing is almost like hunting for a T-Rex in Jurassic Park, right? You can hear it kind of stomping around. It's quite loud. This is a pretty bad place for me to have found it because these Grunia are going to cause a problem. You can see that it has, generally speaking, Vombabalists around it. So we can go ahead and we can farm these to continue charging up the Leers. Generally speaking, it won't be in combat like this. What you'll actually have to do is bring out your Operator. We're going to pop that first ability that gives us the damage boost, and we want to be shooting it in the head. You can see all over its body, it's doing like the 900s. When you hit it in the head, it's like significantly more. And we just want to pop its shield. We don't want to do anything else right now. This is one of the things that causes the most arguments that I've seen, is people get impatient and they want to start popping at its limbs and stuff but this first time when we pop its shield off it won't really start recharging its shields so all we need to do now is get these lures to heal off so all we need to do is get at least one of the lures charged once we've done that we can actually start fighting it we need two charged to fully capture it but once one is charged we can actually fight it we're gonna get one more done just so that we've got it done and with that done we can now call in the necromach pick which one of these it is you want to pop you can see we need to do the synovias that's what they're called these little coily looking joints and the two kneecaps if you come just about in front of it it shouldn't be able to block any of your shots pop the turret and you can see how instant that is make sure that line there is connecting it to the Eidolon. If that's not the case, it'll try to disappear and it'll run away. It'll just like go into the ground or something like this. But if you hadn't had one charged, all you need to do is leave it with its shields down and it'll continually, as you can see here, summon more of the Vomvalists. Now we can see we can't hurt it anymore and that's because we need to take its shields back down again and we need to do this for each of its joints. Pop that ability, shoot it in the head. Back into the Necromech. 
pop its join. If we need to, we can obviously bring over Trinity. It will usually be de-energized because the scream drains the energy of your Warframe. So you will need to make sure that you bring those energy pads in. The warning is, and we could just need to keep on doing this now until it has no joints in. But when we get to the last joint, we do need to make sure two of these are charged. Cool. Okay, we're going in for another round. Let's go. I made a bad angle. I should have gone a bit further ahead. Into the Necromech. Get the turret on. Blow its knee up. Second one is now charged because that Vomvalis got caught in the blast. These are still okay for health right now. That's good. All right, get a bit ahead of it. We'll let this blast go through because the, the tank deals with it pretty well. We've still got a second left of waiting. Off that. In the head. This is going to be a bit slow. But there we have it. Back into the tank. Now, I'm not going to pop this one. Obviously, right now, into the fourth, and that'll pop its joint. What I want to show you next is that sometimes it'll do a scream that regenerates its shield. All right, I've been waiting for ages. It doesn't want to play. Basically, sometimes it'll make like a squeal noise, and the sentience will start trying to heal it. It's very similar to what they're about to do now. And what you're going to see... If I, yeah, I can't demo it here. You can see that it's trying to absorb the little vomvalis here. We need to stop that from happening. If it absorbs too much when it stands up in a second, it's going to have a big, massive shield, and we don't really want want that now the good thing is the mortal on that comes with the void rig has a bit of a radial burst on it and we don't need to actually destroy the vomvalis we just need to make them go into the ethereal state and that'll disturb them from healing it and you'll know whether or not you've succeeded like right now you can see it is damageable if it's not damageable then all you need to do is go back into operator mode to bring its shields down and now We've just finished ourselves our first Eidolon. Because we have the three charged lures here, that means this is going to be captured. It's going to be considered captured, not destroyed. And two of these are actually going to break. So if you're going to do like lots of these, you are in fact going to need to get more lures as you do more and more of the Eidolons. I just want to put a note on just in case you are doing this and you want to do the harder ones because you have better gear, more arcanes and that kind of thing. To continue doing higher level ones, ordinarily, you'd come over to this lake. It's called Lake Gara Tote. You can see it here on the map. I'll let that go on there for you. And to progress to the next stage to get a higher level Eidolon, you simply put your Radiant Eidolon shard that we just got from the Eidolon onto this, and that'll summon the next Eidolon out of the lake. But that is enough. We've done the very first Eidolon. All of the different ones effectively work the same. The bigger ones do have other AoE stuff, but if you're playing as Trinity, if you go in even with high level players, they'll probably be quite happy with you effectively looking after the lures. Most people want to go and do all of the damage. If you can look after these lures and keep them up so that the run is going efficiently, nobody is going to complain. I can promise you that. Next up in the playlist is probably going to be toroid farming because that is a different material we need to start unlocking other amp parts. And I would like to have both of those done before we start talking about building our own more fleshed out amp. I hope this has been informative. I hope now you can slay your own Goliath and I'll catch you all in the next video.